We've done a lot of work in Photoshop to get ready for going into Dreamweaver and coding up this website. For instance, we created a background tiled image using the offset filter, and that's in here on my files panel. It's called navy striped uh, underscore bg, and I can see that tile tiling across the background of my web page at the moment. Uh, I also sliced up my mock-up in Photoshop, and I exported all those slices. They are now in the images folder, and I can see them here in my files panel. And there they all are. Okay. And I've also got my index.html main page, and I've also got my external style sheet called style1.css. So everything is set up for me to now pull in those slices into my web page and set up in the web page in what we is commonly known as coding up the website. First thing that I have to do when I'm doing this is usually put in some kind of overall container where all the main pieces of my website are going to go. We often put in what we know as a div section and we often call that a wrapper div section. So to insert a div section here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put my cursor, make sure it's in between the start body tag and the end body tag and then I'm going to go into the insert panel and I'm just going to find my insert div tag option and I'm going to click on that as soon as I go insert div tag, this insert div tag dialog box pops up. And it's saying that it's going to insert a div tag at the insertion point where my cursor is, that's fine. And then it's giving me a prompt for either a class or an ID. Now, the difference between a class or an ID, you should really look at the video tutorial that deals with that. But for the moment, I'm going to choose ID. And because we said if this was going to be a wrapper div, that's the ID that I'm going to give it, wrapper. Now, keep an eye over here in the uh, code view to see what happens when I click OK on this insert div tag dialog box. That's what happens. So a div start tag gets popped in there with an ID attribute that is set to wrapper. I've got some dummy text here as well that's just put in uh, by Dreamweaver just so I can see in the design view uh, where I have to paste any kind of text or images that are going to go inside that wrapper and then I've got my end div tag as well and so the div tag is in there the div section is there now I just want to create some rules to tidy that up a little bit one of the things that I want to do is have it a per particular width probably about 900 pixels is a good idea and I also want it to float over the background, so depending on the size of the uh, the web browser window that the user is viewing this website through, that when it resizes the window, that that central div section stays in the middle of the web browser window. So I'm going to go over to my CSS styles panel, and I'm going to click on my new CSS rule icon, the one with the little plus on it. That brings up this new CSS rule dialog box. And at the moment it's saying selector type. Choose a contextual selector type for your CSS rule. Well, I just want to put a rule on an ID of a wrapper. So basically any type of element or tag that has been identified with an ID attribute of wrapper that this rule will apply to it. So I'm going to change this from class to ID. Good. Now I'm going to choose or enter a name for your selector. So I am going to put in the name wrapper, but because it's an ID, I am going to make sure that I precede that with a hash key. So hash W R A P P E R for wrapper. And choose where your rule will be defined. It's going to be defined in my external style sheet, style1.css. Okay. Let's click OK on that. It creates the selector for me in my style sheet. I can see the selector pop up here on my CSS styles panel. And like I said, one of the main things I want to do is change the width. So I'm going to click on the box category. And in, in this width text box, like I said, probably a good width for me to start off. And I can see how I go from there is 900 pixels. I also want to change the margin. Now I don't want to put in a specific margin that says that it's going to be exactly 100 pixels in from the left and 100 pixels in from the right because then that makes it very very fixed 
and if a web user, if they resize their web browser, it's going to stay fixed in those positions. I want to leave this wrapper a little bit more flexibility. Although it's 900 pixels specifically in width, when a user resizes the window, that div section will float over the background. So in here on the margin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the margin equal to auto. And I'll click OK on that. Doesn't look as if a huge amount has happened because my, my window here on the computer that I'm using is quite restricted. Uh, but that content wrapper is now 900 pixels. And if I was to view it in the browser, it would, uh, it would float over it if I resize the window. And that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll look at trying to put in this nav bar, all the different slices for the nav bar, and how we go about that.